here's the instrument right here. It's much smaller now that you see it in person because you're kind of like, oh, I was thinking it'd be so cute. What are you going to do with it? Um, I have some things for you guys. This is a telescope. You guys can hold it. Just don't stick your fingers in it, please. That's my only okay. request. Um, so that's actually the size of the telescope. So when Rick oh, and Diane were talking about um, scanning down through the limb, we're looking through with that guy right then. And then there's other activities the instrument will do, which is called an occultation, which actually uses this really whoop, small guy right here, the solar viewer. And so that actually looks at all the light that's coming, that's being back scattered, or excuse me, forward scattered from the sun. And we'll go into this teeny aperture here. Now both of these are how you collect the light, and they're connected by this fiber optic cable. And that goes through and enters the spectrometer, which is this guy. And so this is actually mounted upside down right here. And so it's mounted upside down because all the optics, like where the light goes in, there's a couple of mirrors. Kind of like think of a prism it sort of takes in the light and then spreads it out via its wavelength um that's all up here but then down here are all the electronics and so that's what's really generating a lot of heat you know i mean if you like if you have your tv on for a really long period of time you feel like it hot mm -hmm. and so we mount it upside down from this area let me see if i can take it off so you guys can check it out um so it's coated with this special material that will actually take all this heat that the instrument is producing and then radiate it out to space. So we're kind of keeping it at a thermal equilibrium um, so it doesn't overheat. Uh, and then the last bit I have is the actual, so this is a little CCD sensor. So this is actually what's in the spectrometer taking um, all the data. Uh, what happens is it's, it's like a camera. And so, like I said earlier, all the light will come in and there's uh, a prism or grating that takes it and spreads it via the wavelength and then it will image um, like pixel one will correspond to like 250 nanometers etc and it goes all the way across the CCD and then we'll bin it and so that's how we know how much signal strength is per each wavelength. So when Diane was talking about like signal to noise earlier you know this is how we actually get the data back and cool. can determine because inherently there's like the electronics just produce like a a nominal amount of signal that you just can't get rid of and so you have to figure it out and calibrate it which is also what I do here over there is kind of where I did a lot of the instrument calibrations that green thing is an integrating sphere and it has a tungsten halogen light source and a xenon light source to stimulate the UV and the visible light that we'll be seeing somewhat similar to on the moon and so it can represent a light source so then after we've taken we understand the dark current We'll put, the, we'll put it in front of the light source and so we can get a register of how much signal the instrument is capable of measuring. And then there's just some, oh, thank you. And then there's just a bunch of accompanying electronics, um, et cetera, in the lab. Wow. Do you guys have any questions? So what's the bin size that you're going to be using for the spectrometer? Uh, we can measure up to, I think it's 0.59 nanometers. So better than one millimeter resolution. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty impressive. The next project that I'm working on now is actually something similar, but looking at infrared spectroscopy on a lunar rover, and its resolution is like six nanometers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's very, very coarse, and so it's kind of like looking through a blurry camera as opposed to a really fine-tuned one mm -hmm. that you would have here. How long have you worked here? Uh, it was four years, July 4th. Yeah, so I haven't been here for very long, <laughs> but this is still a long time. Yeah, and this was the first project that I worked on, and I was able to, when I graduated college, I came here right afterwards, and so I've been fortunate to be able to be on the same project, follow it through sort of like the design phase, and then the testing, and then now it's getting ready for launch. It's super exciting. Yeah, yeah I know. It's like, it's like your life's work. <laughs> yeah. so, so out of curiosity, what is your degree in? Uh, aerospace. So I'm kind of, um, my official title on the team, I don't know if Jessica or anyone told you, I do the integration and testing, which means after the instrument is designed and built, I put it all together and then run it through the calibrations that we do. And in addition, we put it through a series of environmental tests. Um, so we like shake it, we vibe it to simulate like, um, so when it's on the rocket. Reaction wheels messing up. <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. But also the more important one is uh, when you're going on the rocket through the environment, the rocket is actually shaking incredibly. And then um, 
there along the way like the, several of the stages will come off which sort of uh, simulates kind of like a, a shock mm -hmm. that would be induced onto our instrument and so we have a table here that will simulate that type of shock as well and then we'll put it into a thermal vacuum chamber and operate it um, at lunar pressures and then run it through the temperature because it'll be cold uh, we run it down to like minus 25C and then up to plus 70C to really kind of stress it and make sure that it's still going to operate. Mm -hmm. um, and their design is valid. Cool. So yeah. Oh, very so, important piece very of the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, um, so after that, so we've got integrated onto the spacecraft right now and it's sitting getting ready to launch pad and my job has now transitioned into more of an operations role. So I am involved in kind of when we'll do what activities like they're showing you the limb looks and the occultation looks. Mm -hmm. um, I help plan those um, along with Rick and Diane. Um, so it's a lot of fun. It's yeah. a lot of fun being kind of like there planning. This is what we're going to do when. Uh, it's sort of cool to have that kind of power. Um, yeah.